Greetings, friends. Welcome to our devotional study today. We are in the tail end of Genesis chapter 48. Matter of fact, we're looking at the last verses of this chapter today as we come together. And uh, as we look at these verses, um, we're going to see that uh, Joseph notices that um, Jacob has uh, put his hands on what he figures to be the wrong voice, and he tries to deal with that. And uh, Jacob tells him that he's made no mistake. And then we see uh, Israel's parting words in the end of this chapter. So with that in mind, let's pick up our reading, Genesis chapter 48. And we're going to read verse 17 down through to the end of the chapter. It says, When Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand upon the hig of Ephraim, it displeased him. And he held up his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head upon, uh, onto Manasseh's head. And Joseph said unto his father, Not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. Put thy hand, right hand upon his head. And his father refused and said, I know it, my son, I know it. He also shall become a people, and he also shall be great. But truly, his younger brother shall be greater than he, and his seed shall become a multitude of nations. And he blessed them that day, saying, In thee shall Israel bless, saying, God make thee as Ephraim and as Manasseh. And he set Ephraim before Manasseh. And Israel said unto Joseph, Behold, I die, but God shall be with you and bring you again unto the land of your fathers. Moreover, I have given to thee one portion above thy brethren, which I took out of the hand of the Amorite with my sword and with my bow. So as we look into these verses, first of all, we notice in verses 17 through 20 that uh, Joseph seeks to renounce or to uh, renounce the blessing that God has put on his boys through um, Jacob. And he says, listen, Dad, uh, J Jacob attempts to change his father's will in verses 17 and 18. And he says, Dad, you're getting the boys mixed up, thinking that maybe in his old age that his father was confused or or whatever it was. And uh, Jacob makes it very clear. He says, Joseph, I have made no mistake. The choice that I have made today is not just my choice, but it's a choice that has been made by the sovereign will of God. Notice what he tells him in verse 19. His father refused and said, I know it, my son, I know it. He also shall become a people and he also shall be great. But truly his younger brother shall be greater than he and his seed shall become a multitude of nation so he tells him he says listen he's he's trying to help jacob see that the choice that had been made had been made by god and not by joseph or by him or by jacob and uh so there's a what happens here in verses in these verses 17 through 19 is there's a big of a dispute that occurs between joseph and jacob about blessing the firstborn and uh, this dispute, however, did not last long for Joseph quickly and wisely understood that Jacob had been guided by God in this choice. And uh, that this blessing that Jacob pronounces was a blessing that wasn't just simply coming from Jacob. It was a blessing that was coming from God. And uh, friends, this is a wonderful illustration of how you and I need to yield to the will of God, though many times we may think that we have other plans or we may have other things that we want to do. But when God shows us otherwise, friends, we are wise to submit to the will of God. And Jacob here was acting under the divine guidance of God, and he voices God's will in this matter. And Jacob's determination to, the, to do the will of God in spite of opposition from the one closest to him in affection and loyalty, friends, is a good example of giving the will of God the top priority in our life, regardless of any opposition that we may have to doing the will of God. We must understand that absolutely nobody or nothing is more important than doing the will of God in our life. And that's why, as we look in these verses, that Ephraim was placed before Manasseh. And that's what it says in verse 20. He blessed them that day, saying, And these shall Israel bless, saying, God make thee as Ephraim and as Manasseh. And he set Ephraim before Manasseh. Um, and as we look, this is wonderfully fulfilled now in the history of the tribes. Ephraim was not only more numerous, but he was also more powerful and influential as a tribe in the nation of Israel. And you can see that as you study through the Old Testament scriptures 
and what the what they say to us regarding Ephraim and Manasseh. Truly, Ephraim was placed before Manasseh. And then we see Israel's parting words in verses 21 and 22. And I love this. It says, Israel, notice it, it's, it's the new nature talking here, not the old supplanter, but the one who's the prince of God. He says, behold, I die, but God shall be with you and bring you again unto the land of your fathers. Behold, I die, but God. Oh, friends, what wonderful truth here. Let's look at this in the time that we have today. You see, this emphasizes that Joseph came to the end of his life strong in faith. Oh, friends, that's where we need to be. May it be our desire to reach the end of our lives strong in faith, that we can truly say, be ye steadfast, uh, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I can think of nothing any better than to be able to come to the end of life and to say, I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, Jacob did not sour away. He was not a sour old man uh, who drifted away from God, but rather the closer he got to the grave, the stronger it seemed that his faith became. And friends, this is the kind of faith that we all should have. Death does not disannul our faith. Death does not bring us to the place where faith is no longer needed. The faith that we have in the Word of God will will be the only... Uh, will only be more fully realized in death as we stick close to God. Oh, friends, the reality of a person's faith is not only seeing in how they live their life, but how they leave this earth when this life on earth is over. Also, I want you to notice Jacob did not become uh, so taken up with Egypt that he lost affection for the promised land. Friends, we must not allow the things of this world to take our eyes or our affection away from heavenly things. Joseph, Jacob did not lose his faith because of the duration of time that had passed since the promise of God had been made. Faith, friends, has patience for the promises of God. I'm reminded, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36, it says, For ye have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. And here, Jacob, by faith, looks to the promise of God. But I love how he says this. He says, behold, I die, but God. <laughs> Jacob says, oh, listen, you might lose your father, but God will remain. He will never cease to be. Jacob is saying, I die and I can no longer be with you, but God will never leave you, son. Jacob is saying, I die. I cannot bring you into the land. I cannot take you back to the promised land. But God can because he lives and he ever lives. Oh, I die, but God. And then we see in verse 22 that Jake, Joseph receives a double portion. Of course, well, that is because he would be the father of two tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim. It says in verse 22, moreover, I have given to thee one portion above thy brethren. In other words, he's got two portions. Uh, which I took out of the, land, the hand of the Amorite with my sword and my bow. Notice it's interesting here in the end of this verse that he says, I took out of the hand of the Amorite. Well, think about that in just a moment. Jo Jacob or Joseph here received special favor from Jacob. Um, but it was not by coincidence. It was not by favoritism. It was designed by God. It was because... Joseph had lived a life that was better than the others. He had lived a life of integrity. And friends, it does pay to live right. Let me encourage you, be faithful to the Lord and your rewards will be many, though they may take time to arrive. And you may not even see them this side of eternity, but that's okay. Also, as we close here today, the record of Jacob having to fight for the land is a reminder that the opposition to God's will and work are always present and we must oppose such opposition with for forcefulness. When we know what something, when we know about something that it's God's will, don't automatically assume that maybe it's not God's will because you face some opposition. All that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Friends, let us be firm in our convictions. Let us be firm in our conduct, and let's not give up our vigilance lest Satan inflict defeat upon us where we formerly had victory. 
Oh, friends, let's not give in to the wiles of the devil in our life, but let's be firm and let's stand and let's not give place to the devil. Have a great day.